Good morning, everybody. Everybody here, are they paying attention? Good morning, everybody. Hey, good to hear you. Good to hear you shout it out. Hey, we're going to do something a little bit different this morning, just a little different. You guys are going to love this, all right? You ready for this? Here's what we're going to do. We are going to, all together, we are going to read an entire chapter of the Bible. Somebody's clapping. I love it. Now, for those of you who are really worried about that, don't fret. It's only six verses. All right, it is Psalm 150. Psalm 150, the praise the Lord Psalm. We'll do it responsibly. It'll be a reader, a leader, and a people. I want you all to rise if you're able, please. We're going to read this together because you know why? We're this is the praise the Lord Psalm. We have something to celebrate. That's why we come here. That's why we sing. That's why we worship, because we have something to celebrate, and that is our risen Lord Jesus Christ. So here we go. And by the way, do me a favor. Use your outside voices, all right? No inside voices here. I want you to shout it out at me, okay? This is praise the Lord. This is big deal. Here we go. Praise the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Oh, yeah. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Perfect. Keep that up. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Oh, John's going to love this. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resoundings. Oh, yes. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's worship. Oh, gratefully sing his wonderful love, our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Oh, tell of his might, oh, sing of his grace, whose globe is the light and canopy space. Bye. 
say, Lord, in your mercy, and you repeat here our prayer. Let's pray. God, what a privilege it is to join with all of heaven in singing your praise. And we are so grateful that you care so deeply for us that you would hear our prayers this morning. Lord, you promise that everyone who is weary may come to you for rest. So today we lay our burdens before you you who are our refuge and our strength, our help in times of trouble. Plant your peace in our hearts and help us find hope in you. Lord, in your mercy. God, you are holy. You are righteous. We are not. So that we confess 
that we have offended you with our sin and we have hurt the people you love. So please, forgive us our sins, those, those we know about and those we don't even know about. Help us to turn away from sin and restore our relationship with you so that we may live in the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today for those who are struggling with their health, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, or any other affliction. God, please encourage them, be with them, comfort them, and in the mighty name of Jesus, heal them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who grieve the loss of a loved one. Draw near to them in your healing power. Wrap your loving arms around them. Give them strength and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Father, our nation is in turmoil. We are divided on so very many issues. God, help our elected officials. Give them wisdom, courage, and integrity. Help them turn to you for the strength they need to lead in your ways. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, many of us are struggling with relationships. Help us to forgive. Help us to let go of bitterness. Help us resolve conflict in loving ways and help us to control our anger. Grant us your guidance in all our relationships. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, we pray for our church. Show us what it means to be a light in your world. Reveal how you have gifted each one of us to serve and put a burning desire in our hearts to serve you joyfully. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we all say amen. You know, as we get ready to sing this next song, I think what we just did there can be summed up really in one word, and that word is Hosanna. And sometimes we think of Hosanna as, as like a, a substitute for hallelujah, but the, the word actually means God save us. That's what we just prayed for right there. We prayed for God to intervene in our lives and to, to, to step in where, where, where we are weak and where we need him. That's what this song is about as well. It's about God saving us. Let's sing. 
save us from the evil one. We know that if we call out to you, Father, if we submit to you and reject the evil one, that he will flee. And so we ask that right now, God. Drive anything that is not of you out of this place right now. God, open our hearts this morning. We love your word. We crave your word. We want your word right now. And so God, open our hearts so that as we hear your word, we hear your word, our minds can be transformed and our hearts can be turned to you, Father. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Cross. We are so glad that you are here or joining us online. We believe in practical faith. Faith that makes a difference in our everyday lives. I'm Nicole Johnson, the Next Steps Coordinator, and I have a few quick announcements, which you can also find on our website when you click our Announcements tab. So first off, we love food, and we are going to be having a potluck in the park on Sunday, August 21st from 5 to 7, and it's at Haynes Park here in Altoona. So there's going to be some fun yard games, there's a great park, and we're going to provide some food, so some hot dogs, and we would love for you to bring a side to share Unless you're adding shredded carrots into the jello, I'm going to tell you in my mid 30s, I do not like finding hidden vegetables in things. And I'm sure there's some kids here that might agree with me, and we could debate about it later. But we'd love for you to come, bring a side to share, um, have some fun. And then right after this, we are going to be having some prayers at our schools. So we're partnering up with Inspire Our Schools. And there's some schools right not nearby, Altoona, Centennial Clay, that we're going to be praying for. So right after this event, if you'd like to come join us, um, just blessings over our communities, our teachers, our students, and these families in the community. And also next weekend, we're going to be having our back-to-school blessing during worship. So we just want to bless you and love on you and pray for you. And we'd love you to join us for that. And then lastly... Alpha is starting again this fall, and this is a great program that we do. We provide a meal, and we explore faith, and I'm going to let the video tell you a little bit more about that. Thank you. Morning, folks. Hey, great to see you all. Uh, whether you're here in person, joining us online, welcome. Glad you are joining us. It is great to be with you. We're starting Alpha uh, this fall once again, and uh, this is an opportunity to explore the big questions of life and faith in a, in a safe and friendly environment. And uh, 
it includes food, folks. You get a free meal every week during Alpha, and so at least come for the food. And uh, then a bonus, you get to talk, have some conversations about the really important things in life and ask your questions and explore faith. And so maybe that's for you. Maybe that's someone, for someone you know in your life that you want to invite. There are cards out in the atrium you can pick up on your way out. And we pray about who can you invite, Alpha? Who needs that invitation from you uh, to join and uh, have an opportunity to explore faith this fall? So it's good to be with you. It's been a couple weeks. I've been out and about. I, last week I was uh, speaking at Okaboji Family Camp. And so my family got to come along too. And um, they're one of our partner ministries. Uh, beautiful camp right on Lake Okaboji. We got to spend some time on, on, the, on the lake um, boating and tubing and, and also some really fun times singing songs and learning about Jesus. And so if you're, uh, if you're considering uh, making plans for next summer already, I'd suggest you consider family camp. It is an awesome opportunity. It's like an all-inclusive vacation. You don't have to cook provided, and you get lodging, and then you, you couple that with an opportunity to grow in your faith. And it's all in one, and it's a great opportunity. So check out family camp next summer. It's for all ages. Um, be, be thinking about that. So it's good to be with you today, and we're starting a new series called Explore, Live, Lead. And I'm going to explain what that's all about here in just a moment. But we have this core value, something we talk about a lot around here, and it's this. There's always a next step in your faith. There's always a next step in your faith. There's not, there's not a graduation or a finish line or whatever. The only finish line is, is heaven, right? And until that point, we're always growing. We're always learning. We're always taking a next step in our journey with God. And so there is always a next step in your faith. Let's say this all together. There is always a next step in your faith. That is so true. Now, one of the things we heard from you last spring, we did a, a, a churchwide assessment. And one of the things we heard is that sometimes it can be hard to know what that next step might be. Like, you know you want to grow, you want to learn more stuff. Like, well, what should I be doing? Where am I at? How do I do that? So all that kind of stuff. So our adult discipleship team has been talking about and working on some language, a framework, if you will, to help us think about where we are in our faith journey and maybe some next steps and some resources to help us grow and take next steps where we find ourselves. And so that's where this language, explore, live, and lead, comes into play. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see this here. And there's kind of three different phases or seasons in, in our faith journey, generally. I mean, there's be a lot more complicated than this, but really high level, there's kind of an explore phase where we're asking questions about our faith. You know, we're asking questions like, who is Jesus? What is the church? And why would I be a part of one? Why do bad things happen to good people? And, and so on and so forth. All these questions of, of faith. And we're wrestling with this. And is this for me? Do I fit? Am I in? How does this all work? And we're exploring faith. And, and then at some point, we say, I'm in. I want to follow Jesus. And there's this season of living practical faith, of, of learning how faith in Jesus plays out in all aspects of life, how our faith influences our, our family and our marriage and our finances and our hobbies and our, and our work and all this stuff, and, and we're, we're learning and we're figuring out how this all fits together and how our faith shapes everything. And as God does that work in our lives, he moves us into a place where we can then lead. Whereas God pours into us, there's an opportunity to pour into others to share what God's given us, to be a person of influence, to help others come along and take next steps as well. And so there's kind of this lead phase. And so I just want this morning for you to begin to think about where do you find yourself? What season of faith most resonates with you? And and just to clarify, there's not necessarily like one straight linear path through all this. Sometimes it's very cyclical, and we return to phases, and we go back and forth. You know, like sometimes a crisis happens in our life, right? Uh, A loved one dies, a marriage ends or something, and all of a sudden we're asking some pretty serious questions about God. And maybe we're at another point, but we're we're returning to that explore phase because, boy, we got some questions of, like, God, what in the world are you doing right now in my life? Because this is hard. And, and so there's, there's times like, like that, or, or we enter just a new season of life. Like maybe we become an empty nester. And well, I knew how to follow Jesus with kids in the house, and, and we kind of help them get through their, their 
journey through faith, but now how do I follow Jesus when my kids aren't living at home with me, right? I mean, there's a new phase there, and we've got to figure out how do I live faith now? Or you retire, and the same question, how do I live faith now when my work's not kind of, my, my life's not geared around my work? So there's, there, there's times where we turn to other phases. That's not linear. It's not a perfect model, but, there's, but hopefully it's a framework that can help us think about where we are in our faith journey and some next steps that might be helpful while we're there. And so during the series, and I hope for the long term, what we're going to be doing is, is providing resources for each phase of the journey, each season in our, in our faith. So you can kind of say, okay, I think I'm, maybe I'm in this phase. This is kind of what I th- where I think I'm at. And, okay, here's some options. Here's some next steps that maybe God's calling me into to help me take next steps as I find myself in that season. So that's the opportunity that's going to be in front of us. And we'll continue to talk about this over the next couple of weeks here. But today we're going to talk about explore, exploring faith. Now, when I think about exploring, I think about the Iowa State Fair. How many of you have been to the Iowa State Fair so far this year? Good number of you. I have not, but uh, hopefully that happens over the next uh, week or so here. Now, the fair, the fair is like all about exploring, right? I mean, you can see new things. You can smell new things for good or bad, right? Um, and, uh, and, and, of course, trying new food. Now, I ran across three new foods at the fair that I want to describe to you. I think this is something I might want to explore. Um, let me describe these to you. The first one on the left there, that is a pork picnic in a cup. All right? So you got some Fritos there at the bottom, layered with barbecue pork, and uh, then you got some baked beans, then you got your coleslaw, you got some barbecue sauce on top, and you can mix it all together, and voila! Picnic in a cup. <laughs> Sounds pretty great, right? And then this, in the middle one, this is really fascinating. So it's a chicken sandwich, but the breading it's sugar-coated cornflakes. Oh, yes. And then the bun, Krispy Kreme donut. Isn't that incredible? A Krispy Kreme donut. And then just in case that wasn't enough of a heart attack for you, <laughs> we got bacon and maple syrup on it. Oh, yes. So there's that one. And then number three, baked potato. But not just any baked potato. It's uh, piled on with uh, pork and brisket. And then there's mac and cheese, but not just any mac and cheese. It's bacon and brisket mac and cheese with barbecue sour cream on the top. So there we go. Now, what I want to do, I want to take a quick poll, LCC poll this morning, of if you were at the state fair, which of these three foods would you be most interested in trying? All right? So make your selections here. So how many of you would most want to try Number one, the picnic in a cup. All right. A few of you, that's your choice. All right. How about number two, the donut chicken sandwich thing? How many want to try that? Yeah, brave souls there. Yes. All right. And number three, how many try the potato one? Oh, man. I think the potato might win it. Wow. That, that, that was consistent. Well, and I got to ask, how, how many of you just think all three are disgusting and don't want to try any of it? Yeah. That's how you do that. Yeah. But the, 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 the fair is all about exploring, right? And trying new things and some weird things sometimes that maybe you have no other uh, place in your life where you would eat a donut and chicken together, right? I mean, where else would you do that? So the fair is all about, all about exploring, and that's really fun to do. But I want to talk about today something even more important than exploring fair food. I want to talk about exploring faith and faith in Jesus. Because here's the deal, folks. That there is nothing more important than exploring faith in Jesus. Because this, ha- this impacts every single aspect of our life here today. And it determines our eternity. And so there's nothing that's more worth exploring than faith in Jesus. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Of how we can do that personally and as we can help others do that as well. Now, in order to do that, there's a group of people in the Bible that were really good at exploring faith. And uh, here's the kind of the the setup. The Apostle Paul was on a trip, and he was traveling around an area and stopping at different cities and telling them about Jesus. And so he was at one city named Thessalonica. Everyone say Thessalonica. Thessalonica. 
that's a mouthful. But there he was. And that's where we get the, the book in the New Testament, First and Second Thessalonians. He was written to the Thessalonians who lived in Thessalonica. So anyway, he was there, and there were some people that believed, started believing in Jesus, but then there was a whole bunch of people that actually started a riot. <laughs> Uh, they, they weren't too kind to uh, Paul and his companions, and they started a citywide riot, and Paul and Silas had to leave and go somewhere else, and so they went to another city called Berea, and that's where we pick up the story, okay? So chapter 17, the book of Acts, you can follow along in the few Bibles on your phone, or up, it'll be up here on the screen as well. So, as soon as it was night, the believers in Thessalonica sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now, this was a normal pattern in Paul's life. When he went to a new city, he would start with the Jews. The Jews who believed in God, the, as in the Old Testament, they just, and they were waiting for a Messiah, this one that God would send someday to, to, to usher in God's kingdom, but they didn't know anything about Jesus. They didn't believe that Jesus was the anointed one, the one that God had promised and had now sent. And so Paul would go to these Jews and explain Okay, this one that you've been hearing about your entire life, the one that the prophets write about, the one that's supposed to come and sit on David's throne for all eternity, you know who that is? His name is Jesus. And he has fulfilled every Old Testament prophecy. And he has come and, and yes, you killed him, but God raised him from the dead and he is alive today and he, he wants to be your Lord and Savior. And so he would communicate this news of Jesus to these Jews who had never heard about this before. And so... They got some wrestling to do. They got some exploring to do. Like, is this real? Is this true? I mean, because this, this is not what we've believed our entire life. And so they, this was brand new ideas for them. Now, it's really interesting, their response. Because how they responded, how they explored this teaching of Paul, it, I think it was really wise and also can teach us how to explore faith as well. Okay, so check out what they did. Now, the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. Like, no duh, right? They didn't start a riot, so they're much more noble character. So for, here's what they did. They received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. So a couple things here. Pay attention to this. First of all, they received the message with eagerness. Okay, they were, they were open. They didn't just shut the door like, nope, that's not what we believe. I don't want to hear about it. They, they, they were they're open. They were, they were humble enough to acknowledge there might be something I don't know. I, I mean, maybe I've, I've studied, I've learned about God my entire life, but maybe there's something I don't yet know. And they're open to learning about that. These would be the people at the state fair who'd be trying those three foods, Right? Like, I, 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 don't, I don't know if this is any good. I don't know if this is going to taste good, but I'm willing to try it out. I'm willing to test it out. I'm willing to take a bite. All right? So they're, they're open. They're eager. They're, they're, they're humble. Sometimes we can get so set in our ways, so closed-minded to anything new that we're just, we're not even open to what God might want to show us next. But that's not how they were. They were open. But at the same time, they weren't gullible. Do any of you know anyone who's gullible? Is that person sitting next to you? See, that's why you're not raising your hands, maybe? Yeah. Uh, how many of you uh, um, knew that, know that someone just wrote gullible on your shirt? Yeah, all right. No one's going to fall for that one, right? That's an old joke. But uh, sometimes people are, are, are gullible, aren't they? I, I, I ran across a, a text message exchange that I thought was kind of humorous. Check this out. Um, go to the next slide. Someone texts, why aren't you answering? What the response? Sorry, I dropped my phone and can't find it. I'll text you when I find it. Oh, oh yeah, you get the, yeah. Okay, you find it yet? No. Okay, let me know what you do. Yeah. Gullible, right? Sometimes we're not as discerning as uh, maybe we should be. These Bereans, they were open and humble, but they were not gullible. They were discerning. They were wise. They weren't just going to take in what Paul was saying, hook, line, and, think, and sinker. What they did, Scripture says, is that they, they examined the Scriptures. Every day they, they, they looked at, is, 
is what Paul is saying is, is that it's consistent with the scriptures. They had a foundation of what they knew to be true already. And so this new teaching, this new idea, does it fit? Does it work with what we already know to be true? And they would go to the scriptures and, and seek out truth. It's like they almost like used the scriptures as a filter, right? Like think about it like this. If a filter has a job to do, right? We've got a coffee filter here. And so like you, you would put your coffee grounds in here, right? And then you stick, you stick it in the coffee maker and the water comes down and, and filters through and, and it lets some things through, but not everything, right? Like I, I like my coffee dark and bold, but I don't want to be chewing on coffee grounds, right? Gross. Who wants that? So there's, there's an important job for a filter to, to let some things through, but not everything. There's some things we want in our coffee. There's some things we don't want in our coffee. God's word is like a filter for our lives, letting some things through, but not everything. Because there's some things we want in our life, and there's some things we don't want in our life. And folks, we live in a, a pluralistic world with like all sorts of ideas out there. There's all sorts of ideas about what's going to make you happy, what's going to bring peace and joy to your life, what, what, what true life is all about. There's ideas about relationships and sexuality and, and how we handle ourselves in public and all this kind of stuff. Like, how do we discern, like, okay, what's right and good for our lives and what should, should not be part of our lives? This is where God's word functions as a filter for us. That we, we, can, we hear all these ideas in, in the media and social media and television and all that stuff. Like we can filter it. We can run it through the filter of God's word. What we know to be true already. And then, okay, what, what comes through? What, what might be good to have in our coffee cup, in our life? And what needs to stay out of our lives? Because that's not right, good, and true. This is why it's so important for us to be in God's word as a church to, to be in his, in his word as a, on a weekly basis, we gather for worship, but more than that, on a daily basis, studying the scriptures, getting into God's word, immersing ourselves in that truth and in that wisdom. So as we encounter all this different stuff out in the world, we have a filter. We don't need to be gullible. We don't need to believe, because everything on the internet's true, right? You know, right? No, of course not, right? But we, we need to be wise and discerning in God's word is that filter for our lives. So let's be people of the word, immersing ourselves, allowing, allowing that filter to be present in our lives so we're not gullible. Now, so the Bereans, they were, they were open, they were humble. Maybe there's something to learn here. But they're also wise and discerning. They had a filter, right? And that's what God wants us to do, is we explore faith, to explore new ideas, to be, to be humble and discerning. Both. Now, when they did that, when the Bereans did this, here's what happened. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. And so, so here, here, they believed. They, they tested out. They used their filter, and they discovered, yeah, what Paul is saying is true. They received that message that some Jews did, and also Paul extended that message to Greeks, the people that were living there that were not Jews, and, and uh, they believed as well. Now, I really wish, I was thinking about this this week, would it be fascinating to know a story or two from these people, like these, these Jews who, who came to know Jesus, or one of these Greeks who, who never, maybe they worship a bunch of pagan gods and whatever, and like, all of a sudden, they're believing. Like, would it be fascinating to know like, what their life was like prior to that? And then what that exploring looked like and the questions they asked and how they wrestled with that and then what their life was like after. I mean, that would just be fascinating to know some of those stories. But unfortunately, we don't have that. But we do have a lot of other stories. You have stories. You have stories about how God has been at work in your life and how you're, you're different today than you were in the past and the difference that Jesus has made in your life. And it's so encouraging to hear these stories. This is what it's all about, this transformation, God changing lives. I want to share with you one story this morning from a woman that, that was 
wrestling and exploring and didn't know a lot about God and how God brought her through that phase to a place where her life was changed. Take a look. I didn't really know much about God. Uh, Shelter Rock Church uh, had their first Alpha program. So, um, so I signed up uh, because I did have a lot of questions about the Christian faith. The first session, it was about the meaning of life and uh, Nikki Gumbo uh, talked about, uh, you know, how everybody was born is born with this, you know, God-shaped hole in their life, and uh, and many people pursue money, use money, success, uh, fame, and power to fill that hole. So I thought, wow, that's that's pretty much me. That's me. It was really, really challenging time. I was just completely overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do, so I prayed. And then in a matter of a few months, God answered my prayer. That's when I realized that He's real because He answered in a way that uh, it would be impossible. Because my prayer wasn't that He would give me all these provisions or open all these doors. My prayer was for him to change my boss <laughs> because he was being so difficult. But God wasn't really interested in, in like changing him, but he was interested in changing me. It's not um, money or what kind of job that you have define your success. You know, it's who I am uh, in, in Christ that defines me. My husband was also in a really difficult situation at the time. So, and I said, why don't you try, you know, you pray. And uh, so he started praying and God also answered him. So, uh, so he came to faith. So we uh, began, you know, sharing our faith with our uh, family members and with our friends. And um, I, every semester, I would um, invite, you know, one of these people to go to Alpha with me. Right? And I would go with them. One by one, they all accepted Christ through Alpha. Uh, so there was uh, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my brother. Um, I one time I invited a couple of kids from my own neighbors, um, and then uh, and then just most recently, my best friend and her husband, and they all uh, accepted Christ. I'm Amanda Shea. I go to Shelter Rock Church. We're at my home. Uh, in Glenhead, New York. And tonight, my community of friends, they're gonna bring their homemade food and we're gonna have a dinner together. Church, this is what it's all about. It's about seeing Jesus change people's lives, of, of filling that, that God-shaped hole, of realizing that God is a God who answers prayers, of, of finding your identity in Christ and not in what you do or what you have. I mean, the transformation that happens. I mean, this is, this is why we're a church, folks. This is, this is why we do what we do. This is why I became a pastor in the first place. I remember back in college, I was majoring in management information systems. I, I was learning how to, how to program computers. But then during college, I, for whatever reason, people would... St my fellow students would come to me from time to time and ask for advice or share a struggle that they're having. And I was able to point them to Jesus. And I got to see firsthand the, dif the difference that Jesus would make in people's lives. And I'm like, I was hooked. I didn't want to program computers anymore. I wanted to just do that full time. And so I became a pastor. That's because like, I want to see people's lives changed by Jesus. This is what it's about. This is why we're a church. We, we don't exist for any other reason. We're not some hangout club for Christians. The only reason we exist as a church is because God's on a mission in this world, and we, he wants us to be a part of it. He's inviting each and every one of us to play a part. Our, our governing board's been, been looking at this and studying this and discussing it and praying about it. And, and uh, one of the things that we launched recently is what we're calling the BLESS Initiative. And we have a team of people that have been interviewing leaders in our community, um, leaders in business and education and government and partner ministries and other churches and, and thinking about what are the needs out there? What are the opportunities? What are the hopes and dreams of the people around us? That, and how then can we be a blessing in, in a way that points people to Jesus, that fosters relationships and connections and, and reveals Jesus in the midst of everyday life? And so 
the teams at work. We'll keep you posted on that. But I'm really excited about what God is going to show us and the opportunities that he has in store for us as a church. But folks, there is a role for all of us in this. Each of us has a role to play in God's mission, to see lives changed by Jesus. We all have a role to play. This, earlier this summer, my family and I, we went on vacation to northern Minnesota, to the north shore of Lake Superior. Um, and we, uh, we, were, we kept going farther north and farther north and farther north. And then we had to stop because there's something called Canada up there. They won't let us in without a passport. You know about this? So we got as far as we could north and we had to stop. But what is, there's a state park up there, a beautiful state park called uh, Grand Portage State Park. And there's a river, Pigeon River, that, that is the international border between Minnesota and Canada. And so we couldn't get into Canada without a passport. But we started scheming. We thought, well, how could we get in? Because we wanted to explore, we want to see what that's like to be in Canada, right? And, and, uh, and so there's this river, and you can see us out there. We thought, well, if the international border is the river, well, what if we got out halfway across the river, Right? And then we could straddle the international line, right? And we would make it to Canada. And so we did. And we didn't mean to fall in. And so we're claiming we went to Canada. And we got proof, actually, because Lisa got a, a text message from, our, our, from Verizon saying, welcome to Canada. So we think we did it. We think we did it. So we did, but not really, right? I mean, we didn't really get fully into Canada. We really didn't get to see what it was like. We really didn't get to explore a different country. We were there. We could see it. It was just right over there, but we couldn't go there. Folks, there are people in your life who are, who are looking across the river, looking across the border into a life of faith and wondering what that could look like for them curious about, about the hope that we have in Jesus, the, the peace that we have in him. And, but there's, they don't have their passports. They don't have an invitation. They don't have the resource to, to, to go explore that and see what that might mean for them. And so they're stuck on this other side and just no opportunity to explore. But folks, we can be passports for people. We can be the inviters, the encouragers, the, 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 the listeners to help people explore faith in Jesus. There's all sorts of ways that, that we can do this. We've talked about Alpha a lot this, this morning. This is what this is all about, uh, providing a safe and friendly space just to have conversations about the things that matter most, the big questions of faith and life, and, and people to explore faith. And so I want you to think about maybe this is you, that you need to be there this fall, or maybe you know someone that, we need to be a, a church of inviters who are willing to reach out to our neighbors and friends and, and co-workers and say, hey, here's an opportunity to explore faith. Would you join me? Let's go do this together. There, again, remember, there's car, invite cards out there. Take one or take ten and hand them out. Invite people. Or, or maybe it's a simple invitation. Join you in worship. I mean, you're coming here anyway, so have them come with you and explore faith in this environment. Or we got this picnic next weekend. I mean, that might be a really safe invite, right? Just come to the park with me. We're going to have some food and hang out. Or maybe it's an invitation just where you're walking across the street to someone else's driveway and inviting them into conversation. How's your summer been? Getting to know the people around you and see what God does with that. Or inviting them to, to a, our kids or youth ministry and, and, and connecting with them that way. There's all sorts of invitations or options and just discerning, asking God, what what next step would make sense for this person? And inviting them. What's, what, what's, what, what would most make sense for them? What would they most likely accept? Be praying about that. Inviting. Being there for people. Being the passport that people need so they can go and explore faith in Jesus. Because again, this is what it's all about. This is why we're the church. This is why we're Christians. It's because God wants to change people's lives. And we just get to provide a space for God to be at work. That's his work, not ours. And so, let's be those inviters, those passports. But let's be closer. If you're in this place where you're exploring, 
I, I just want to leave you with a word of encouragement from Jesus himself, because I mean, he loves explorers, and he has a special promise for you this morning. And here's what it is. It's from Matthew 7, 7, where Jesus says this, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. If you're asking, if you're seeking, if you're knocking today, know that there's a response that's waiting for you. Jesus loves explorers, and he's ready to meet you. doubts. Um, the first for the this exploring feel yourself for about you and to answer get question answers to their questions. And for others of us, God, God, would you move us into a place of mission? Would you give us courage and boldness to, to be inviters, to have conversations, to be listening ears out in our, out in our everyday lives? God, would you cast out fear and, and excuses and move us, God, in a mission? God, we know we are your church. We are your people. And so use us, God. We pray this in Jesus' name who taught us to pray this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hey, as we wrap things up today, we're going to sing a song, a song about this faith, this faith that we get to explore, this faith we get to share with others, this faith we have in God the Father, in God the Son, in God the Holy Spirit. We're going to declare what it is we believe as a church that we get to explore and share. So let's stand together and sing.
something I want you to yell out. Yell out, I believe. One more time, I believe. All right. Take that with you. Take that belief, take that, that care, that understanding that God, if you seek, if you ask, if you knock, he'll be there. Take it with you. Go with courage and conviction. Go and be the church. Thank you and have a fantastic week.